Using a set of 6mm Grand Tactical Rules, Altar of Freedom, our club set up this 6x4 foot table to refight the Battle of Second Manassas. The scenario begins with hidden deployment, so all of the miniatures start off the table, and our opposing teams huddle together to talk strategy. McDowell can move up if we get some sort of contact somewhere along here, he has the ability to enforce mm -hmm. wherever necessary. You'll have Porter coming up to do the same then, so. Our general plan is to wedge Jackson up north of the Unfinished Railroad Cut, which is where he was found historically, and we suspect that'll be too good a position not to take advantage of. Well, Jackson is deployed, Longstreet will be arriving. Um, our plan is to defend the rail line and attempt uh, an off-board maneuver to hit the Union left flank. We'll see what happens. Although Longstreet himself will not arrive until early evening, our Confederate players are unable to resist launching their surprise flank attack right away. Robert E. Lee directs the three-division attack and surprises McDowell's corps, scoring some initial success by caving in the Federal left flank. But unlike Pope historically, our Federal commanders react quickly, sending reserves to shore up their left and contain the rebel push. Did Lee make a mistake by not waiting for Longstreet and the rest of his corps? It's still mid-afternoon, and only time will tell. Okay, okay so that's Confederate 5. Now it's time for Union 5, which is the entire third corps. <laughs> oh, the guy who gets flanked twice is telling me to pay attention. Okay. Wow, wow. We'll just roll. By the late afternoon, Pope manages to organize his lines for an assault on Longstreet's corps, which now defends the railroad cut next to Jackson. But as dusk settles over the battlefield to end our first day, two Union corps manage to drive Longstreet out of the railroad cut and back into the woods atop Sudley Hill. There is little doubt that day two of our scenario will have no resemblance to the historical battle, but both armies still have reason to be optimistic as they plan for the next morning's work. Well, our plan for the second day is to maintain a defensive posture and we have the high ground. If we need to fall back, we will continue to fall back to a higher elevation, uh, draw the Union troops out of the earthworks that they captured the first day. Uh, we need to protect Jackson's Corps, so we need the Union to make the assaults so that we can whittle them down. I think we'll do a much better job of breaking them while preserving ourselves on the defensive than we will going over to the offensive. And the offensive is very much on the minds of our three Union players. They plan a renewed push against the Confederate right, where Longstreet's Corps defends the wooded hills in depth. It will not be an easy task. The federal offensive is hampered by two problems. First, Porter and McDowell are proving themselves tardy and unreliable subordinates. And secondly, Lee sends Stewart's cavalry on a surprise flanking effort that crosses a ford over Bull Run and nearly captures General Heinzelman in the process. But once Stewart's cavalry is contained, Pope's main push rolls forward in the late morning, grinding out slow but steady success against Longstreet's position. Jackson's wing finds itself lightly engaged, but losses on the Confederate right are mounting fast. Too fast. By the early afternoon, Lee himself is desperately close to the front line of Longstreet's wavering troops, being assaulted by three Union Corps at once. Our scenario ends with the Army of Northern Virginia battered and in retreat away from the field. General John Pope has scored a convincing victory here, which should not come as too much of a surprise to those who are familiar with the history of Second Manassas. Although Lee won a stunning victory in 1862, the opposing armies were equally matched in manpower, and, as we discovered today, if the historical Pope had displayed some cool-headed leadership, this is a battle that could have ended 
under very different circumstances.